Okay, so uh, so I'm just showing my uh, my screen. So I'll just start off with just giving you a, a quick tour of the uh, of the Leap uh, Leap Academic uh, Academic Portal. So if you go to the uh, Leap website, and then there's a Leap Academic Portal. So you can uh, log in. So if you haven't uh, created an account, you can uh, create an account. So then once you've done that, and then uh, you log in. So there's a whole uh, heap of different uh, tutorials and uh, workshops that you can uh, you can run through. So if we go to structural, for example, we've got basics, FEA, intermediate, advanced. There's meshing. Uh, there's uh, there's geometry creation somewhere in here. Oh, sorry, geometry is on its own here. So, so geometry and space claim. And then there's also a training course. So uh, there's also a university uh, blackboard. And then there's a, a Teams. So here there's a formula student. So here this is where we've got our, uh, our collection of a whole lot of um, workshops we've done in the past for Formula SAE. So for example, if we go to day one, finite element analysis, there's a whole heap of, um, of workshops that we use when we run the design to win um, event, usually uh, close, to, uh, close to Easter time. Okay, so um, you can sort of run through these at your own uh, at your own pace. So there's a, a lot of uh, things in here that will sort of get you uh, get you started. You might not necessarily find the exact copy of what it is you're trying to uh, you're trying to simulate on um, for whatever project it is you're doing, but there might be things that are, are close that will sort of get you uh, get you started. Okay, so uh, so we'll break this uh, presentation up into a few different segments with uh, with demonstrations uh, demonstrations along the way of different aspects of what what it is we're uh, we're doing. Okay, so just a uh, an agenda. So. Uh, We'll do uh, an introduction, sort of telling you what uh, what FEA is, uh, a little bit about geometry preparation and uh, geometry creation. Then we'll look at uh, meshing, structural analysis, topology optimization, and um, fatigue as well. So these are possibly uh, topics that would be of um, of interest, or certainly something that you would use in. Uh, in designing the uh, parts of the uh, parts of the race car. Okay, so uh, we're not aiming to make you experts in FEA uh, in this webinar. We're just giving you a brief uh, introduction and overview, sort of to get you uh, to give you sort of a, a kickstart. Okay, so if we look at uh, finite element analysis and uh, and what it is, so if any mechanical system, you can characterise it by always reverting back to the equation of motion. So you have uh, force as a function of time, and then you've got uh, a static term, uh, you've got a, uh, a kinetic term and an inertia term. So whenever you have time effects, your accelerations and velocities become uh, become important as long as well as the uh, the static effects. So this force is almost always applied as a function of time. So if I just play this animation down the bottom, so this is an example of a uh, fairly uh, dynamic uh, event. So you can't solve this as a static uh, simulation as one snapshot uh, in time. So you basically have to solve it in uh, in time with each sort of time you sort of simulate what uh, what's going on, and you're solving for accelerations, velocities, and uh, and displacements. So when we have a, uh, a linear static uh, analysis, we can simplify this equation significantly. So uh, our time effects uh, are not not relevant. 
so that means that our, uh, our velocity term becomes zero and our acceleration term becomes zero as well. And we're basically left with F equals kx. So F is a, uh, our force, K is effectively a stiffness and X is essentially a, uh, a displacements or displacements. Okay, so if we look at this in very, very simple terms, so with a, uh, a one, if we convert it to a one dimensional uh, problem, so the simplest way to do this is to use a, uh, a spring or a, a spring element. So the spring has a known stiffness. If we apply a force, we can calculate what the, uh, what the displacement of the, uh, of the spring is. And because this spring is linear, so that means when you apply more and more force to it or as it gets more and more displacement, its stiffness uh, stays the same. So this is a, a familiar relationship, so it's uh, just based on, uh, on Hooke's law. So you can very easily calculate what the, um, what the displacement of the, uh, of the spring is. Okay, so if we increase the level of complexity of this problem by adding a, a second spring in series, so these have got two different uh, stiffnesses and we apply a force on the end of the spring here. So what we're aiming to do is we want to calculate the displacement at the end of the first spring and at the end of the second spring just here. So our x1 and x2, so they're basically our two, uh, our two unknowns. So in order to solve this problem, we have to create a set of simultaneous uh, equations and then based on um, some, uh, some matrix algebra, we can solve those two sets of simultaneous equations and come up with solutions for the x1 and x2 uh, displacements. So if we uh, look at this in terms of uh, finite element analysis, we convert these springs instead to, uh, to elements with a, uh, with a stiffness. So in this case they're still one dimensional because they've only got stiffness in, uh, in, one, uh, in one direction. So uh, essentially the uh, elements stretch by uh, the displacement that we, uh, we calculate based on the force that we, uh, we apply. So when we uh, look at a, uh, any sort of generic structure, you basically break it down into uh, what we call elements. And then each element has nodes in which uh, the elements are connected to each other through. So what we do is we calculate, instead of just two displacements, we have multiple displacements. And also we, they have uh, components of displacement in X, Y and Z. So we, uh, we basically calculate the displacements at each one of those nodes based on the forces that are applied to the, uh, to the model. So after we calculate our displacements, we can then go back and uh, calculate our, our stresses and, uh, and our strains. Okay, so uh, what I'll do now is I'll uh, look at the, uh, the geometry. So the starting point for any sort of um, analysis is always going to be some sort of, uh, some sort of geometry. So I'll look at uh, a geometry, uh, geometry creation. 